This is exactly what's wrong with this generation. You have no respect for the elderly. Now clean up my mess. Hello again, everyone. It's me, Madame Macabre, and welcome back to another story time. It has been a hot minute since I've recounted some adventures from my expeditions to the local Walmart. Well, to be honest, this is the first time I've had some stories since moving down to Arizona because I haven't really spent much time at the Walmart down here. I mean, in, in my new place, I have a lot more options that are close by. Part of the reason why I had so many excursions to the Walmart at my old place, uh, back up in Washington, was Walmart was the closest shopping center to me. Up here, now I have lots of choices like Sprouts, Whole Foods, Safeway, which I tend to go to a lot more. However, sometimes Walmart is just more convenient, it's opened longer, and sometimes Safeway and other places just don't have what you need. So I found myself the other day with no choice but to go down to the old Wally World to pick up a couple groceries. And let me tell you, what's supposed to be a short shopping trip can end up taking ages there because sometimes it feels like you're on a wildlife expedition. I don't know what to tell you. So, I figure, hey, why not take an interesting afternoon and uh, turn that into a fun story time for you guys. And uh, for those of you who have to work at Walmart, I'm so sorry, you don't, you don't deserve the things that you have to deal with because I'm just getting a, a small sampling, a small sampling of the Walmartians, what they have to offer you. I can't even begin to imagine the things you see behind the scenes. Feel free, by the way, to share those stories in the comments, like, you know, part of me, I've got that morbid curiosity. But I digress. So I go there, I'm needing to pick up birdseed, is one of the things I need to get. Like, I, I got a bird feeder, I like to uh, do cat HTTV, uh, my subscription ran out, aka I ran out of birdseed, and my cats need to watch the birds, which you can actually see <laughs> the silhouette of Artemis in the window. Uh, so I need to get more seeds, so I head over in that direction, and the first thing I see, like, it, you know, it starts out, it starts out fairly normal, fairly normal shopping trip. And it does start pretty tame. The first thing I run into, not anything to particularly complain about, something I just thought was entertaining and, like, makes me full body cringe because I remember being this age. I hear really loud, really bad fake British accent around the corner. And there are a couple of teenage girls. Oh, look over there, sister. Will you hand me that package? I don't know if they just discovered Doctor Who, or if they got really into Sherlock, or who knows what. But I do remember this. I vividly remember lots of teenagers when I was that age doing that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know, so, some part of your teenage brain genuinely thinks you're slick like you think you're gonna fool everyone around you into thinking you're a foreigner and like again this is harmless it's not hurting anybody it just it, it made me like it laugh but also cringe because i remember being that age and while i don't remember specifically doing it myself i remember having friends who would do that and be like, why are you doing it? No, don't worry, don't worry, just tell him, just tell him your friend from London, why? But you know, I had I had a couple of the Tiaboo friends who were like obsessed with England, so I don't know, flashback, it's harmless, it's harmless, but it was very entertaining. You're just trying to get bird seed and they're just like walking through the aisles going, oh, look over there, do we need one of those? Like, okay. And it wasn't even like, they weren't even like, I, I'm, I'm cheesing it up here, but like, they weren't even trying to be funny. It's not like they were trying to like, comedically get reactions, and they didn't even have phones out. They weren't even like, trying to record TikToks or something. Neither of them had phones in their hands, they were just doing it. I mean that or like, I encountered like, two actual like, you know, British people who naturally have the worst, fakest sounding accents ever, you know? Who knows, maybe I walked into a pocket dimension, but that, that was the, you know, the just the starter, just easing right into it. And if that was all that happened, I wouldn't even be making that story time because in a sense, that's just cute. Like it, it makes you cringe, but that's because we've all been there. But no, that, that was just the beginning. Uh, I finally make it to the bird seed and I'm trying to just select which type I want to get, what size bag, and then I hear the coming around the corner. I'm like, okay, I know the sound of a motorized scooter. 
<sighs> it's Walmart. Y you hear it a lot. And then around the corner buzzes this little old lady. I'm like, okay. Like, it's a wide aisle. I'm, I'm fully to the side. I'm only taking up the space of the bird seat that I want to get. But apparently that's the one thing she also wanted to look at. So she's just sitting there on her scooter. <sighs> Like, the entire time when I'm, like, reading the different seeds, like, just trying to pick what I get. And since, like, I don't like conflict, it's awkward for me, so I, I just finally quickly just make my decision. I grab the bag, and then, like, I back my cart up out of the way so she can go. Then she buzzes up at the bird seed, and then she just sits there, and she looks up at the shelf above her. These heavy bags, and she's this little old lady in a, in a scooter. I don't care that she was just being, like, a little bit rude to me with a, <clears throat> impatient... My natural upbringing and manners go, oh, this frail old lady, if she tries to lift a big bag from a shelf above her head, she has to stand up from the scooter and get it. She, she, it's gonna it's gonna be a disaster. Excuse me, ma'am, would you like some help getting that bag down? I can help you if you like. I can do it myself. Mind your own business. What? <laughs> oh, okay. Dang! Okay. And this is the thing that gets me. I feel like a lot of the time, the millennial generation, we're, we can't win no matter what we do. Because I guarantee you, had I not offered to help her get the thing down, it would have been a, kids these days have no respect for the elderly. You just stood there and watched me struggle and you made no effort to assist me in any way. But, so... But I do offer, and now I'm just rude because I see her, you know, I see a situation, I make the offer, would you like assistance? And then it's, how dare you assume I can't do it myself? Like, lady, you're, you're old, you're frail, and you're in a mobility scooter, and that bag of seed is bigger than you. Okay, have fun getting crushed under it, I guess. Bye. So, <laughs> that was encounter number two. Already an interesting, an interesting start, but, you know, just two, just... Two Walmart walkers is not quite enough to to warrant a full-on story time. Keep going on. Along with my business, I start moving to the other side of the store. I make a pit stop in the craft section on the way to the food area because I am updating my Bayonetta costume. I'm making a new wig, a better one, um, and I needed some supplies to make that when conventions and social life return from the war. But <laughs> I digress go down the aisle, I start browsing the different types of wire that I'm gonna need to like, I, I'm using a cup as the base for like the, the beehive, but uh, I, I'm getting some wire to use for that. And then around the corner come, I have no other way to describe it than like literal textbook, like an e-girl and an e-boy. They have like the most stereotypical, the boy, he's got that where it's the, they, they've only got, like, a bunch of, like, loose curl hair on the top, and they shave around. It always reminds me of, like, Phil from the Rugrats. Um, wearing, like, the e-boy fashion. The girl has the, you know, the blush all over, super red nose. Like, I realize this is me just, like, being a millennial and, like, starting to age out of the young people things, but I don't understand that. I, like, I don't get it. Have fun, but I don't understand. <laughs> blush doesn't go, doesn't go on the bridge of your nose. But uh, I digress. The, the 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 blush and the fake freckles and the the, the 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 I'm a gamer clothes and it was it was interesting because I've never spotted that in the wild before. Like I guess I'm not too weirded out by it when I see it in online media because it feels like it's online fashion and they're doing it specifically for TikToks. But when you when they wear it out in public, it's a little strange to see. But that itself that was fine. I would not be talking on this. The problem is okay. I'm in the craft aisle. I'm already here. Not only are they going in the wrong way, because, you know, where they've got to enter this way, don't enter this way, they come in the wrong way. Neither one of them are wearing masks. Neither one. I don't know how they got it. Maybe they just, like, took them off and put them away, but neither one are wearing masks. And, uh, while I'm- they clearly see me here. I was here first. They come uncomfortably close. Again, no phones out, nothing, because, like, now it's it's sad that we're in a world where when people are being obnoxious brats, you have to wonder, are you trying to, like, get a weird reaction for TikTok? But no, no phones out, no masks, and they just start, like, grossly making out. Like, they didn't just, like, immediately do it. They, they stopped in front of some other stuff, and they started talking and going back and forth about which one they should buy. And then they get closer, and they start giggling, and then they just start making out. And I'm like, 
Hi, I'm still here. By the way, you're not wearing a mask, and you're in this biohazard bubble that is the Walmart. Why? Why? So at that point, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna grab this wire. I don't need to deliberate anymore. That helped me make my decision. I'm leaving. So I had to go out the wrong way of the aisle. But I just backed it on up because I didn't want to get any closer to like the the bacterial contamination that was happening over there with their like violent making out without masks in the Walmart. So that was a thing. Hello, Apollo. You joining for the story time? So, I finally make it over to the food aisle, and I'm just walking up the center aisle to make it back to the dairy section, and I almost get taken out, like, full-on T-boned by this soccer mom. I have never, like, listen, I've made combat runs to grocery stores before, too, where I need three things. I don't want to be in here more than 20 minutes. Boom! You run in, like... You, you, you go, you power walk, you go safely, like you do, 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 no, no nonsense, you just go, you get what you need, and then you get out. This was not just a combat run, this was like full-on warfare run. This woman, like, to give you an idea, I genuinely, like, looked around to make sure there was nothing dangerous happening, because she was running with a full cart. She was like, like, actually booking it with a full cart to the point where she could barely control and steer it and it almost hit me and it's just like the hell like mind you i don't know the circumstances that were going on in her life maybe she just got a call that there was a medical emergency in fact moving with that speed i would i would venture to say something serious happened in her personal life since nothing else happened in the store that being said I still almost got completely run over, and after everything else in that day, it was just kind of like, wow, okay, sure, let's just add that to the list. But honestly, it's not safe to go barreling like a train out of hell around blind corners, because mind you, I was in the main walkway, she was coming out of the side aisle, she came flying out, she didn't even stop, and was like, dude, y'all, you're entering traffic, it's like, like a screaming locomotive, and... Lady, I hope, I hope everything's fine in your personal life, again, but that, that was a lot. And you know what? That still wasn't the last, the last encounter of the Walmartians. So after that, I'm just like, now I'm on edge. I'm like, I don't want anyone to come freaking kiss near me with their masks off and like sneezing organisms everywhere. And I don't want to run into another old lady, which by the way... I don't want to run into another old lady who's going to yell at me if I do or don't. And then I also have to keep out. It's like Donkey Kong Country with the runaway mine carts out here. Oh my god. So then I go down the aisle. I just need to get some white vinegar so I can use it to clean out my humidifier. I go in there. And by god, there's more scooters. Another old lady comes buzzing in with her scooter. And okay, so I'm like, okay, I'll I'll just pull it on this side. And like, no matter what I do, it's like she's matching my movements. So I grab the vinegar and I turn around. I'm like, I'm just gonna get out of here. Another old lady on a scooter <laughs> starts coming down the freaking aisle way. So now I'm in the middle and they're like, do 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 do. I'm like, uh. Uh, uh, like I literally had that moment where I was looking back and forth. Neither one of them was stopping or like making an effort to get out of the way. Like, they literally saw me like a deer in headlights trying to figure it out and they just kept coming. And the worst part of this is there were witnesses because coming around the corner, like, there's finally some totally normal people at the Walmart, but like this normal, like young couple who looked about my age, like stopped, saw me like, uh, 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 like with the carts thing and they just busted out laughing. So I'm glad, I'm glad I could bring some entertainment to you. I did have to do some em evasive maneuvers and get out, but I could just hear them losing it, chuckling and then commenting on the, the old ladies, like literally. Cause I, I got to admit, if I had encountered that, I would have thought it was hilarious too. I mean, it's just a comical scenario where you're, you know, you have dueling old ladies on scooters and you're trapped in the middle. Like, I don't, I don't know what beef you guys have with each other, what duel is going on, but I'm not a part of this. So I leave that area and finally I get the rest of my groceries in peace. There's, there's just fairly normal people there. Then I go to the, the, the second like self-checkout area that they've more recently added, not the small ones, but where they're like 
full on there's like a long moving conve conveyor belt so you can if you have a full cart you can take it there rather than like taking up all the spaces like some people still do and they're inconsiderate where they bring an entire giant full cart through the small self checkout this is the where there's only like four, like five or six of them but uh, I went to one of these, one of them was open, so I just go right on in, and I start scanning my groceries away. Mind you, I'll admit, I ended up with a lot more than I expected. I had a pretty full cart, thus why I went there. Well, this little old lady and her husband end up pushing their cart behind me. And it's like, you know how there's like that etiquette where, especially in the self-checkout, you don't like stand right behind someone uncomfortably. Like you, you wait farther back, especially with the social distancing thing. Well, they stop their cart directly right behind mine. And it's like, okay, I still have half my cart left to unload. And like, oh, you guys are kind of close. And they're like staring at me like they were agitated by the amount of stuff I had or whatever. Cause they didn't have all that much stuff, which just go to the other self-checkout where there's like 20 of them. Like why, why do you need to come here? Whatever, I ignore it, I keep checking my stuff out, and then I just, I can notice in my peripheral vision the old lady starting to get disgruntled and angry and everything, and then the husband, he, he walks past me and goes out and does something else, and then the old lady gets even more impatient. Now I'm about three-fourths done with my groceries, and the old lady finally walks over. So in, in this checkout area, there's usually uh, an associate who work, like is over by a, a small little register thing that's not for checking people out. They just have that little machine there in case there are errors or things they need to clear out. That's all it's there for. This is self-checkout. Their job is not to do your stuff for you. Okay, got that context? Old lady goes up to them and says, Excuse me, I'd like you to check my groceries out. I don't want to have to wait and I don't want to do it myself. Ma'am, this is the self-checkout. I cannot do that for you here. I don't have a register to do that with. If you're in the self-checkout line, you have to do it yourself. Well, I want to do it here. I don't want to walk all the way down over there to the regular cashier. That's a long way to walk. Why can't you just do it here? Ma'am, why did you come here and not go over there then? This is the self-checkout. I'm not allowed to do that for you here. I don't have the equipment to do so. So you're just not gonna do my groceries for me? That's, this is the self-checkout. You young people are so rude and inconsiderate. I cannot believe the treatment I am getting here. Come on, Ralph, we are leaving. That old lady went up, took her husband. They both stormed out of the store, leaving their cart behind them full of frozen food. It was a bunch of TV dinners and frozen foods. An entire cart full of just refrigerator and freezer sensitive items. And they just ditched it and left it behind my cart, blocking the middle of the U checkout area and leaving all that stuff for some poor associate to have to put away. But you know, the associate was the entitled one because they didn't want to offer a service that literally they were in the wrong place for. What can you do? Boomers in Walmart. Oh, goody. All right. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. I just figured since this last trip had so many entertaining things happen, I don't know how I attract these things. It's like, this is why I, st I, I stopped going to Walmart and I started going to Safeway and these wild things stopped happening and I haven't had any stories to share. So it's, it's just interesting because it's, it's definitely just Walmart that these things happen to me in because I've gone to Safeway and Whole Foods and I, I've gone to Sprouts and I've never had any any wild, crazy issues there. It's always Walmart. I, I don't know, but the theory holds true because I was thinking maybe it was just the Walmart near where I used to live. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Walmart down here has these wild experiences too. It's just the Walmart culture, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I hope this story was entertaining for you guys. It, it was fun to, to recount some of the wild things that happened because at the end of the day, none of it like actually hurt me or anything. It, it was just kind of entertaining, got a chuckle out of it. Um, and again, I'm, I'm sorry if you if you work at a Walmart and you have to put up with the stuff. I'm sure it's a lot less humorous and like, oh, isn't that funny? Like when you got to deal with this on the daily. So I apologize that people do this to you. <sighs> Be better to your essential employees, please. All right, guys. I had a blast talking with you guys today, and I will catch you all next time with another one. Until then, remember everybody, stay creepy.